we could talk about Mocking Jay Part One in a minute or less. I think we could probably both speed run our thoughts through it. So let's do it. Like, okay. Literally, all I have to say about Mocking Jay Part One. President money pops in, right? President coin pops in. She's got the Ava Max cut. She's got a lob. She bobbed so hard that she lobbed. And not enough people are talking about that. She's serving with those contacts. Like, I'm all about her visuals in the suit as well. Her vibe is sort of immaculate. It's like she's a little bit, she's like, she's here to get the job done. Like, she woke up and turned up to work and she's getting the job done. But she's also like a little bit like, oh, you're giving me bad vibes, President Coin. I hope that doesn't turn into anything. But then, like, the whole movie, I feel like, could have been squashed into five minutes, five, ten minutes. I agree. I think that the Mocking J Part 1 suffers from the classic Part 1 syndrome. It's, you know, every Part 1 is a Part 1 for a reason. There's so much set up for the world that we're building. You're no longer in the games that we've already built for. We're, we're now going into a war-torn world. Yeah. And honestly, why does every single big franchise end in war? I do have some thoughts about like the capital having the capital vlog squad like escaping the capital and like choosing to film their propaganda like that was definitely it is interesting also like why was there so many like all we needed was one camera we did not need two cameras when I was watching Mockingjay part one and they start singing it and they start the district start fighting back the peacekeepers and they're like singing it as they're marching and the, the background is just like meh, meh. Mm. and then they go to the dam to release the explosion on it i almost started crying like when they're going up and all of them like they're just getting shot down and it's just a full-blown suicide mission of them going in and releasing the bombs to only like fall on the bridge like I was crying. I was literally crying. I thought that was so sad. It was something serious. It was something serious. I feel like they shot it so well and like showed the impact of Katniss as the Mockingjay singing her little tune. Are you? Are you? Coming to the tree. And like Cressida did a big one with the editing on that. Like she really like... Of destruction. She got on the trending page. She got on the Pan Am trending page for that little singing clip. Started the uprising, broke the dam. Power goes out, snow's mad as hell. He's like, um, how am a hologram going to get up? Guys, I need to update my Katniss Updates account. After Seneca died, he took the login for Katniss Crave. Because he was obsessed with Katniss. He was obsessed. He was like the full-time hater that's basically a fan. Like he was so much of a hater, he was a fan. Like, like you he, could not help but love her because you hated her so much. Like he kept up with everything Katniss was doing. Like obsessed, like literally obsessed. Like he was like, we got her, she died in the explosion. Uh-uh, she did not, uh-uh. You thought, you really did think, you, you thought you ate with that. Also like when... The, the squad goes in to rescue um, the girls from the tribute center and Phoenix like running his mouth to like block the channels and he's like spilling all that shit about Snow and then we find out Snow was actually watching that which I don't know why that's funny to me that like Snow's just watching Phoenix being like well yes like I did poison everyone <laughs> <laughs> well yes I do have sores in my mouth <laughs> yeah like why'd you have to expose me like that like shit like I know he was like this when he like heard that he was like no, literally. And then, like, Katniss pops up and he's like, Miss Everdeen. And then Katniss is talking. She's like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be the marking Jay. And then he's like, don't you think I know your friends are in the Tribute Center? Don't you think I know your friends are in the Tribute Center? Cut the cameras. Cut them off. He's like, cut them off. What a sassy old man. <laughs> Like, is honestly, like, he, we are all victims of the Sassy Man apocalypse from Snow himself. Like, he... The Sassy Man apocalypse. <laughs> Just, like, if you think about the sassiness required to jump on this Zoom call with Katniss at 3 a.m. When Katniss is, like, trying to distract him, he's like, anyway. Hey, Katniss. How are you? Good to see you. Hope the kids are good. And then he's like, don't you think I know your friends are in the tribute center? cut him off he like literally just wanted to make her sweat because then gail was like we drove right through their airspace and they didn't do anything all because the master plan was to get Peter back to her so he could kill her she's like Peter, and she opens the door and she walks around and he's like he looks like and he's like azempic Peter. azempic Peter's like sitting there and Katniss is like, my man, my man, my man she's like bay's back bay's back bay boot up 
And then like, he jumps her. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Then, like, they try mm. to stop him. Hamish tries to stop him. Whack Hamish. WWE slam Katniss into the ground. <laughs> choking her out. And, like, the choking was so graphic. It was, like, not just, like, oh, he grabbed her. It was literally, like, something so violent. Like, that. that's when I was really, like, oh, he really could throw that ball at the very beginning of the series. I'm, like, so. where was this energy in the, Hunger in the Games? games? Like, why were you so passive in the Hunger Games? When, like, you very clearly have this ability to be, like, strong in terms of choking. Like, why don't you choke anyone out in the games? Uh, why don't you choke me out? Anything to say? Mm -mm. On the record, is Peter your man? He's like side. Peter or Finnick? Finnick. Peter or Hamish? Peter. Peter or Sinner? Peter. Sinner or Caesar? Peter. The way that wasn't even an option. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Maybe he is my man then. The way I was like, Sinner or Caesar? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, you can't stop thinking about him. I can't stop thinking about my man, my man, my man. Like, you're crazy for that. Okay, last one. Caesar or Snow? Caesar. I lied. Peter or Joanna? Joanna. Joanna or Finnick? Finnick. Right. I've seen what I needed to see. Like, you have taste and you have class. Uh, Mags or Effie? Effie? Why are you surprised by that answer? <laughs> Mags or Snow? Snow. <gasps> what, you would pick Mags? Yes! After Mags, Ma Mags would kiss you on the mouth with that like old lady breath and then go run into the smoke. I would much rather have Mags kiss me than Snow kiss me with those sores. I didn't even think about that. He got that bloody mouth. Yeah. Ew. Okay. But I'm st like, I'm, st I'm sticking with my choices. Today's video is sponsored by Parade. If you don't know what Parade is, Parade makes super cute and comfortable undergarments for anyone and everyone. Parade's best sale of the year is finally here for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Parade is giving everyone 30% off, but with my code TREND-BF, you can get 50% off store-wide. This is the product that I've been recommending to basically all my girlfriends, basically anyone who will listen to me, is these seamless, invisible underwears. They are so comfortable. They feel so silky smooth on your skin, and this might be a little bit too TMI, but they don't disappear within your butt or your cooter. This actually has a sustainable uh, uh, flap of fabric near your cooter that doesn't just disintegrate as some seamless underwear does. I feel like a lot of seamless underwear that I've owned has just literally with one or two steps, it is gone. And at that point, it is like a G-string, and that's just not something that I would like to be wearing all the time. It's not super comfortable for me. The next thing is this Falconette bra. I've been using this bra to death. I'll insert pictures here. It is the most comfortable bra I've ever worn. I've been really into the trend of Falconette bras. I feel like they're very, very good for anyone who is small-chested like me. It just holds it up without doing too much, because sometimes I want to wear no bra, but sometimes I'm not feeling confident enough to wear no bra. And the Falconette bra gives that effect of kind of having a little bit more of a lax fit it's not so tight and it's not so pushed in and it just lets my like my girls sit and if any of the products that i just mentioned is just doing the slightest bit don't worry because i'm giving you guys access to the black friday parade sale and last year's 2022 lightning sale was 70 percent off and this year for 2023 it is 80 the lightning sale starts from november 17th and ends on november 29th but the lightning sale is 80 percent off the site-wide sale is 
50% off, but with my code, you can get 50% off site-wide. Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales can be overwhelming to shop for, to say the least. It is a lot of sales being thrown in your faces, but one thing that I'll say, for gifts or for yourself, you're always going to need underwear. It is a foolproof guide to shopping this year, and this is the best sale you're going to get. Get your family panties. Get your family panties. I'm telling you right now. Is that, do you want panties? Does anybody want panties? Yes. So you heard it here first. This is, quote unquote, the best sale of the year. So make sure you guys go and grab some parade underwear. Styles and colors sell out quick, so you better get on it right now before your favorite color, like this potion color, which is my favorite, is sold out. Don't forget that code for 50% off is TRIN-BF, or like I said, you can go to yourparade.com slash TRIN-BF for 50% off your order today. Thank you, Parade, for sponsoring today's video. Then, Mockingjay Part 2, look, the main thing I have to say is, in the first Hunger Games movie, Katniss gives Prim the badge and says if you wear this badge nothing bad will happen to you i promise and then in mockingjay part two she's not wearing the badge and then bad things happen to her so maybe correlation implies causation but she wears it during the first game and the second game no it's for prim like she gives it to prim and then prim's it gi- prim gives it back to her to wear during the games yeah but i'm like babes you should wear your defense token well, yeah. That's I why mean, Prim got, like, blown up. Right. So, it's her fault. <laughs> Gail can die in a hole. Agree? Gail in this movie, like, it really does, like, go from zero to 100. Like, he's he's not likable in the other three movies. In this movie, from one of the very first scenes that he has with Katniss, he says, they're helping the enemy. If they have to die, I can live with that. And he's like, this is how he justifies killing children of the Capitol. When Katniss is like, with that kind of thinking, you can send off kids to the Hunger Games to keep the districts in line. I was like... Gagged him. Gagged him. And then he thinks he ate. He thinks he ate when he says this. He goes, sometimes killing isn't personal. Coming from someone that has not killed anyone. So volunteer for the Hunger Games. He's literally, he he said, I'm only on my third day out here of being a soldier. And he's literally talking to the girl that survived two Hunger Games. Talking about. He's talking to the girl on fire. The girl on fire who witnessed innocent children go into the Hunger Games and be murdered. And he's like, sometimes it's not personal. If I could kill you, I would do it in a second. Be for real, Gail. Also, maybe he was hooking up with President Coin on the low. Honestly, when when he's like, oh, like we have to go talk to Coin. I'm like, we? Since when are you allowed in the HQ? Since when did Gail become such a vital part of this story? He's not anything special. It's like he did not know about District 13 until they came to save him when the Capitol came for District 12. But then suddenly, after like two weeks, he's in the HQ running his mouth. It's like, you're not Haymitch. Haymitch, not to bring it back to my man Haymitch, but Haymitch, like, again, he's about his business. He's important. Like, he has influence. He has power. He's important to being in the HQ. So is Plutarch. Why is Gail there? Why the fuck is Gail always there? Gail is literally just another person from District 12. That's it. Like, yeah, he saved some people. I think we all saved some people. But his save count doesn't... It doesn't even out with his kill count. Can we please talk about the... Okay, Mockingjay Part 1 and 2, not my favourites, right? Like, if I'm giving scores, it's four and a half for the first movie, five stars for the second movie, then, like, three and a half, three and a half for Mockingjay 1 and 2. Maybe three, three and a half. Right. But then the scenes in Mockingjay Part 2 where they're, like, making their way through the capital and, like, dealing with all the traps... Loved it. Because it's like Hunger Games S. Finnick fighting those, like, monsters. Which, by the way, how are they just monsters? Like, in the monsters in the Hunger Games, they're fake because they're in the arena. But it's like, oh, you can just make them in real life? Well, I was asking someone what those were. Those are mutts. So that's what 
uh, Peta is referring to all the time when Peta. he's like, I'm a mutt, I'm a mutt, I'm a mutt. And basically mutts are what like dog breed mutts are. So they're humans and yeah. like other things bred together to be that like faceless mutt. So they real? Yeah. Oh, that's just nasty. For me, I did mm. like the traps and like what they set up. I also think it's kind of a scapegoat for like telling like it's supposed to be about the revolution oh, sure. and you're making another Hunger Games, bro. Like For uh, sure. For, for sure. sure. But I loved it. Was I entertained? Are you not entertained? No, I was entertained. Also, Finnick dying. Yeah! Light luck. Pissed me off. I was like, kill Katniss. Oh! Kill Peter. He's so expendable. I will say in terms of strength, Finnick... If Finnick had the Mockingjay, how say, movement behind him, he could totally do it. But in terms of strength and, like, actually being a vital role in, like, survival, like, he definitely does outnumber PETA in that sense. Like, he definitely does beat him. PETA. I mean, I just can't get past, like, the scene where Gale does that shit to Prim, like he orders that thing that it's, he's up. But the fact that the reveal of that is from Snow to Katniss is gag city. It's gag nation. He literally is like gag city today, gag, gag city, city tomorrow, tomorrow gag, gag city, city forever. forever. <laughs> I love it when he goes, I, we both know I'm not above killing children. We both know I'm not above killing children. Like, sassy. That's sassy. Uh, li he was literally like, he, and he goes, I'm afraid we've both been played for fools. Because he, he was literally like, he was like, she kind of gagged me with that. Like, she kind of gagged me by like putting it through capital like signals. Like, it looks like capital parachutes falling down. He like gagged me. She, he's like, they came in storming to get me. Then he was like, they also gagged you. So then Katniss finds out about that shit and she's like, Gail, you're over, I'm never talking to you again. And rightly so. Like, she goes, goodbye, Gail. And that was it. He didn't even have anything to say. Like, he literally was like, yep. It's like, well, yes. It was literally, and I hate to say this because we've been kind of like beady, like lovers in this, but Beatty and Gail made the invention. Not Beatty catching strays. They came up with the invention. Did Beatty know that that was the plan? Or did he just build the technology? He's so Oppenheimer like that. I, I can't confirm or deny. I can't confirm or deny that at all. Maybe we could find out by reading the book. We could find some more information. Maybe we need to find more information on that. Well, yes. So then at the end, when um, President Snow gets whacked and he's over, right? And then they do the conversation with the the victors and and they oh, go yeah. coin goes I I vote that we have a symbolic Hunger Games with capital children insane 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 Captain's is like oh you need to be taken out like that was the moment where she was like oh and the last moment where she goes, yes, she goes for Prim. And then she looks at Haymitch and is like, you better fucking vote yes with me. You better fucking vote yes with me because I have a plan and you need to, you need to trust me for once. Because this is her for the first time in the movies, trusting what Snow said. Mm, true. Yeah. And like, President Coyne, like, she's a weird lady. Like, she's a weird lady. And then Katniss, like, does the little... into, like, President Coin. And she falls down the thing. Gag. Like, 100% gag. Like, and, like, Snow starts laughing. 
You need to look back. It's happening. You giggle. need to look back. I'm going to insert it here for everyone to see what I'm talking about. Snow, mm. when he's on the execution, when he's on the pole for the execution, is serving. Is this what you're talking He's literally, this moment, he's literally like this. He's like. <laughs> you better not be President Snow serving on the execution pole when I get there, you. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, lean to the side and he's like, President Coin falls down and he's like, dang, she listened to me. He's like laughing and then he gets beat to death. So then she whacks Snow. No, she whacks Coin. Snow has a giggle. Snow gets demolished. Push up wins the Hunger Games. See, I watched this epilogue scene. She ru they run away. Hamish gets her out of the capital. They say she'll be pardoned for her crimes when things have died down. She escapes. She goes to the Victor's Village in District 12. And then she finds Peter there. Yeah. And it really does not... I like it that they are safe and happy. I wish she looked a little bit more sad, I will be honest. Go so President Snow, it's like, they're holding hands, I want them dead. Well, people have criticized it. They've been like, she looks too sad in that ending scene. I think she should have looked more sad. She's talking to her child about how she makes a list of happy things in life so she remembers them. Mm -hmm. Because all she has lived up to this <laughs> point has been so awful. Like, that is insane. Sidetrack jumping back within the film. Why was her hair, like, eating the entire movie? Like, she goes through, like, she gets strangled by PETA and she has a fresh blowout. <laughs> we need to talk about that. Because the thing about Katniss, she was not going to be... She's so snow-coated in the fact that she was never going to be caught lacking in the hair department. And she had so many hairstyles. She had... the down the side, which you have right now. She had the curtain bangs from Catching Fire. She had the blowout mid choke. Right. Like, she was always serving a visual. And, like, no one wants to talk about that like we do, because it's like during the time, like, I mean, I guess, like, she was really leading a revolution. She needed to, like, serve, or else who would follow someone? That's why President Coyne had so many followers, because she was serving love. What did you think about their happy ending? Um, like. Well, it's like you weren't even like a big fan of their romance, period. Like, not really. I'm like, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them. It's like saying like a Facebook engagement from someone I went to high school with. Like, I'm happy for them. But like, are you? Like, sure. Am I invested? Not really. But it's like. Good on you. I'm glad she, like, got her hands. It does kind of, like, make you almost feel like you're part of the capital and part of the problem when I'm like, oh, they're not killing each other anymore. It's not fun. Maybe that's purposeful? I mean, let's ask Suzanne. I can't, I couldn't tell you the exact thing that is missing, and maybe someone that read the book could enlighten us. Mm. Um source material and why I don't n like it uh, myself. Mm -hmm. There's something like I'm seeing like it's almost like like a um, like a puff pastry like it's like I can see the outer shell but it's crumbling if I try to like pick it up. Yeah like my ranking is Mockingjay part one, Mockingjay part two, Hunger Games, Catching Fire. And I think that's like a reasonable, I think that's very reasonable. Yeah, I think so too. And I agree with that completely. Well, thank you. Thank you, Seneca. Where's the Seneca law? Where's the Sinner law? Where's the Lenny Kravitz law? Yeah, where are all these lores that probably do have lores within the books that we haven't read? It's a lawless Pan Am, and I could not believe it. Pan Am today, Pan Am tomorrow. Pen, Pen forever. forever.